What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. It's DJ Rick Webb. Y'all seen my DJ booth. You seen it, it's super dope, it's clean, it's awesome. But, there's a lot of concerns that both you and I have with my new booth. First off, this thing is big. This thing is bulky. This thing is quite heavy. And it doesn't collapse. Which means you need a giant road case to transport it like like, like, like that one. And transporting this in that giant road case means you need a trailer, like, period. You, or, I mean, a really large van maybe with a ramp, but like, it's not gonna fit in a car. It's not gonna fit in a truck. You, you need a serious form of transportation to get this thing places. And then, when you get to the venue, you better hope you can actually wheel this thing into the venue and get to where you need to be. Stairs aren't gonna work. Uh, basically, you better do a site inspection prior to make sure you can get this big thing in there. And lastly here, if you wanted to build this yourself like I did, uh, you better be pretty good at woodworking and have all the tools to be able to build this. All of those reasons are why I still have this setup right here with my AVJ event table 2 with my custom sign and my custom built SZ case that's pre-wired to some degree. But let's be honest here, the looks of this right here just do not compare to my new custom booth at all. But I think I found the perfect solution for me and for anyone else out there that's looking for a super clean booth like my new custom one with the portability and functionality of this setup right here. Introducing the Bun Gear Command Center. Not only does it look super clean and sexy, but it's also lightweight, easy to transport with the bags behind me right here, and you can pre-wire it with all of your gear ready to go for your event. So Joe Bunn himself is here with me today. He's gonna to be helping me put this all together right here. And quickly, hey Joe, do you mind just sharing what made you even wanna create a DJ booth? Because honestly, this takes a lot of time, money, and energy to actually put a product like this out into the market. Yeah, so as you know, we were building the, um, the fiberglass version of this for a few years and it just took too long, wasn't the right material, wasn't even really the right design, and then we went back to the drawing board and now I've been doing this for over a year and we're finally about to start shipping and so I'm super excited about it. You know, the things that we missed the first time, like the rack, uh, being able to adjust the top yourself, um, all these little things that we messed up on the first time with the fiberglass version, we got it right with this command center. And I am very thankful that this is actually one of the first ever Bun Command Centers that I'm personally going to get. So let's get into it. So first off, let me show you everything we're going to be putting into the command center before we get started. Obviously we have my Pioneer DJ SZ, my go-to mixer. We have the Bun Gear laptop stand for the command center. We're going to need some Velcro. We got a power brick for my laptop. We're going to be putting a Yamaha MG06X mixer in there. We have an antenna combiner as well as some half wave antennas here because we're going to be combining our Audio-Technica 3000 4th gen mics. We have a Furman power strip as well as another power strip that's gonna go in the top. And up here, my good friends at NLFX build us a custom panel that we're gonna be using for this booth. All right, so with the Bun Command Center, you get a base plate, the rack itself right here in the top. The whole thing together, raw net weight is about 46 pounds. Uh, I don't have the breakdown of what each individual piece weighs, but the base plate is the first thing we're starting with. It weighs roughly about 10 pounds. And then the next piece we have is the rack, and we're gonna start assembling right here. The rack weighs about like 15 to 20 pounds, it's pretty light. First step is to place the rack on the base plate and line up where your screw holes are gonna be. And then we're gonna take these three little screws right here to screw in the bottom. So we decided to put it up on a table so it's easier to work on and also it's just easier to film in general. But this right here is the rack portion of the command center and it is probably the main selling point of why this thing is just dope. Because you have a 10U rack here that you're able to mount stuff in. And based on the depth of the thing right here, it's basically a 19 inch shallow rack. So anything that fits in your standard 19 inch shallow rack will fit into this. Now I do want to point out because people might notice that there's holes going all the way up and down this. This is one of the first ones, so it's one of the kind of prototypes. On the ones that are gonna be shipping out to everyone, they're gonna be removing these holes on the bottom and the top, so that way you can access the screws on the bottom and the top to mount your top and bottom. So first thing, we moved our shelf up top right here. This is where we're gonna be putting the Yamaha six channel mixer, 
and we're gonna start moving on down the line here. So we're gonna start off first with my firm and power strip. So we're gonna mount this up in here first. Next thing we're gonna be putting into it is my two Audio Technica 3000 fourth gen mics. Now we're gonna kind of stop right there because one thing you gotta consider is that this is a rack, but it's not a traditional rack because a traditional rack you can access the back side of this to be able to wire everything. So we're gonna kind of stop for a second and actually start wiring up some of the components that we're gonna be using before we continue. So I have two microphones and we're gonna be using passive antenna combiners. These right here are EV. If you guys want anything to do with microphones, hit up Ben at NLFX. I'll link them down in the description down below. But these are antenna combiners and basically I'm gonna use two of these to combine the two antennas from both of these so that instead of four, we're gonna be using two and those antennas are gonna be mounted on the outside of the top. So we'll show you guys that, but I just wanted to show you guys these combiners that we're using that combine two antennas into one um, as I'm doing this. This may look like a jumbled mess right now, but when it's done, we'll be cleaning up all of this, but this kind of just shows the wiring that's all going in the background. Obviously, this is all gonna be covered up. One thing to point out right here, these are our booth outs that are going down here, as well as our mic two. These are gonna be running up into the SZ, and then these are antenna combiners that we're gonna be mounting up here. And then everything is wired into our Yamaha MG06 up here and to our bottom plate right here, which is not actually mounted up right now, but we need it here to actually be able to wire everything accordingly. So lastly here, we're gonna be mounting my drawer that holds all of my microphones for the audio technique. So we're mounting that right below the mics themselves, and then we're gonna be screwing down our little plate down here, and the rack will be complete. And as of now, the rack is complete. The antenna mounts are up here. The Yamaha mixer is up here, all Velcro down so it's not going anywhere. And everything is set and good to go. I will say at a later on point, just because I know a lot of people know I use it, the dry rack PA2. I may or may not put one in this as well. And uh, if I do, I'll probably make a new uh, plate down here to accompany that. But for now, this is what we're going with. So we're gonna put it down on the floor and we're gonna move on to the top. So right here on the table now we have the top portion and we're gonna be going through and assembling everything on the top. So let me show you some of the features of this before we dive into it. So first off we have the rail system right here and what the rail system allows you to do is to put whatever controller you would like or turntables, etc. And with these rails, you can adjust them both up and down, left to right. You can put multiple rails in here if you have multiple different players. Um, limitless, basically, to put your different things that you need. So this right here is the laptop stand, and you can mount it in the center. You can mount it to the left. You can mount it to the right. And basically, you slide it down that one slot, and then you slide it into the connector below that is in the rack. So you can move this to wherever you need it and you have a nice custom laptop stand to work with. And the last feature on this top that we're gonna talk about is on the side. So on the left side and on the right side of the top, we have these cutouts right here, which are for these right here, which are your mic antennas. So Bun Gear partnered with NLFX sells these antenna connectors that will allow you to basically extend your antenna from your microphone to the sides of the rack. So in my case, we have our two antenna combiners up here that we're gonna plug those extenders into and run them to the sides of our table. First thing, I need a source of power in the top to power um, the SZ itself, as well as stuff like a phone charger, et cetera, in this top portion. So we're gonna be putting this quick little Amazon power strip up in the top portion of here, Velcroing it down. And then basically when we put the top on top of the rack, we're gonna fish this down to the bottom and plug it into our port panel. So I set the SZ on top of here and we're just kind of mocking it up but we're gonna have to move our rails around. So we're gonna move them out a little bit so it's a little bit wider to cover the SZ, as well as bring these down so that our top is gonna be flush with this. So I'm trying to figure out how we're gonna drop these rails down. So Joe already kind of knows how to do this. So Joe, you can walk through and explain to me and the viewers yeah, how we're so doing this. Basically, I'm just gonna measure the SZ from the feet to the top of the plate right here. 
and eyeballing it it's about three and an eighth but once we add a little bit of velcro let's call it three and a quarter yeah and then what we're gonna do is take these rails and we want to drop it from the top to this level this 90 degree right here we're gonna unscrew these top screws right here this one not the bottom of this one and the one over here to allow us to drop this rack i just did the same thing with the cross rails you just unscrew uh, just a little bit. You don't have to unscrew it all the way. Just loosen it, and then you can slide these left, right, up, down. So that's what we're going to do now. And as you can see, we finally got it right. One of the things we noticed was you need to basically kind of uh, measure from the bottom rather than the top. The top gets you about close, but then it's a little bit easier if you measure from the bottom of this up to the top of the rail so you can get it nice, clean, and flush. And this will probably take you the most amount of time getting this thing lined up right but honestly, you're doing it once. Once you're done, you're done. So now we're pretty much down to the last things and that's mounting my laptop charger and mounting the mic antennas and we're done. We get to put the top on top of the base and then I get to show you guys how it all comes together and how it breaks down and that's it. All right, so everything is now set up. We have that pre-wired. So next step is to transfer this onto here, screw it on show you wire it up real quick and then uh, we'll show you guys how it breaks down so this right here is the power from that power strip in the top and basically just drop it down the back side and we're going to plug it into one of our receptacles here and then we still have two receptacles available that we can send out to either of our tops on either side as well as our xlr outs all that fun stuff. And then obviously to power this, we need a power con, which we have right here. So that's what's going to run to the wall to power it. Lastly here, we have our antennas for our mics and we need to make sure we hook up our antenna combiners right there. So we're just gonna pop those in and we're good to go. And the other thing I did was feed up those last three cables, which go here to my booth out as well as to my external mic. So this obviously is a backup last resort mic. It inputs right here and this goes directly into my SZ as a third optional backup mic if I need it. The main two mics though run into our Yamaha 6 channel right here. And actually now looking at this, I might actually move this down about to you so that this is at the very bottom of those 10 slots that are available. Just so that way I have a little more room on my shelf to put maybe some more items if I want to. Oh, and I guess the last piece here is to put on our top and our laptop stand. So there we go. We line this up. This is uh, made out of what Joe exactly? PVC. PVC. Yep, same thing. PVC. And you can order these cut to whatever you have. So if you have an SZ like me, if you have an SX3 like him, or a DDJ1000, cut them to that exact size. Joe's going to walk you through the accessories real quick. So we have the laptop shelf here. It's got a nice, easy adjustment handle right there to be able to adjust it in any sort of direction, clamp it down, ready to go. So Joe's going to just slide it right down in, give it a little bit of a wiggle and she's locked into place, ready to go for your laptop. Oh. Right now, it actually has a little bit of a spin to it, but there's actually a mechanism down below that you use to lock it into place, and we'll do that here in a second. And we obviously need to put our antennas for our mics, so we actually have signal, so those just plug in right there. We're using nice big half-wave antennas. Flip them right in, ready to go. And there's the other one. There you go, nice and easy black antennas for a black booth. The last accessory here are our little hook adapters, so we have a mic one that'll just hook in right there into the slot. There you go. So what you can do is we can grab our mics here and we can put our mic right there. So that way I don't have to be fishing in the drawer. My mic's already ready, good to go. All right, I got the power plugged in. Moment of truth. We got our Furman on. Our Audio Technica's already turning on. And the beauty of putting this power strip up top, I'll show you guys close up on a video real quick is that the Furmans have lights built into them. So if you can't see at your gigs, you pull these lights out for the Furmans, and then you can see all the ports and everything in the dark at your events. Now I'm gonna pull my top off here, turn on the power strip, which is already on, turn on my SZ, and we'll also crank on the computer real quick. And we're good to go. Well, Joe has something on his back that uh, I don't think anyone really has seen in person unless you were at NAMM. This is the new EV Evolve 30 yeah. M. There's the base. Check out that backpack though, that's so cool. We're gonna use this speaker to play some audio with this, oh my god, I haven't looked at it yet. Woo! Two booths. The portable transportable option, which we will show you guys here in a second, and my new custom one that requires a giant road case, so.
That's pretty sick. Be before we get copyrighted. All right, so let's give a little quick overview of everything. So fully pre-wired and ready to go. We got the SZ up top. We have our clip to hold our mic, to hold my headphones real quick, ready to go. Everything is pre-wired. We even got a phone charger right here. We got my laptop stand, both the antennas for our mics coming down the rack. We have our Yamaha mixer, which has all of our inputs, all of our knobs ready to go for the events. And then we have our wireless mics, our firm and power strip with the lights, the drawer that has all of my batteries as well as all my handhelds, and then our panel port. So just to explain real quick, this is the booth out coming from the SZ. So if I want to run a monitor speaker, I can do that. We also have a record out coming from our Yamaha mixer. So a videographer can tap right into there and record everything that I am playing out. Left out to the left speaker, right out to the right speaker, which we have there. Power for that speaker as well. Power for this speaker as well. And then we have our backup mic that plugs into the SZ. Obviously, probably not gonna be using it, but it's a last resort backup. The black sick, right, right, Joe? Like, ooh, I'm trying to decide which one I want now, man. We got the black, we got the white. It's a tough decision. Here's a little close up of the white one. If your venue's got a lot of white walls like this, Black maybe to stand out, white maybe to blend in, really depends. All right, so we are on to the final steps and that is breaking this down and putting it in the bags, which are off camera right now, and showing you guys how we transport it very easily in and two gigs. So let me start the breakdown process right now. First off, we need to take the antennas off the side. And actually, I'm gonna store these inside of my drawer down below. So the first thing we're gonna be taking out and putting in a bag is our laptop stand. This right here folds down, we lock it in, zip it up. <laughs> This is ready to go. So the next thing to do is to take the top off. I have my SZ in here right now, and you can leave it in the case itself. Now, I also do a lot of other events, such as bars, clubs, maybe some four, 5K runs, where I wouldn't be bringing necessarily this out. I'm gonna be storing my SZ probably in my Pro X case. I'm gonna be taking a lot of stuff out of the Pro X case and making it a little bit simpler now. It's just Velcro in here, we can pop it in, pop it out. But if you wanna transport it in this like this, what you need to do is buy you a deck saver and do what Joe has done with his booth. And I'll let Joe explain it real quick of how he did this, but basically he's got a deck saver yep. and you can- So on the rails inside, that you guys saw earlier in the video, I put full lengths of industrial strength Velcro and full lengths on the bottom of the controller. Then I put the deck saver, and then really the only reason I put this strap on there was to hold the deck saver on when it was standing up vertical and to also hold the PVC top on. The, the controller would completely 100% still stay with that industrial Velcro just sitting in there, but this top would fall off and probably the deck saver would eventually fall off. But now, the way it's in here like this, now I can just pick it up and I'm gonna put it straight in the back. Absolutely. And the beauty of the deck saver is that way all your knobs and everything are protected when it's inside of the bag even more. Yep, if you don't know about deck savers, just Google deck saver and then your model and all the uh, major retailers carry the deck saver brand. Which is probably something I'm gonna do is buy a deck saver for this so that way if I'm just going to a wedding, I don't have to also bring my Pro X case, I can just bring this inside of the bag and be good to go. For the purpose of this breakdown though, I'm going to be taking my SZ out of here and putting it inside of my flight case over there. Now because of the Velcro, we can just pop this out like this. Good to go. So down below here, before we take the top off, we need to unplug all of the stuff that's connected to the top. So that would be my audio right here from the SZ. So I'm gonna unplug that and fish it up top. And then we also need to unplug both of our microphone antenna combiner outputs and the second one right here. And then the very last thing we need to do is unplug our power from our power strip and pull that power cable up. And now we can remove the screws that are holding the top and take it off. So one is back here and two is right here. You can do three. I'm only gonna do two for the top. So I'm gonna pick it up and I'm gonna put it down right here like so. Kind of like how Joe has his right back there in the corner. All right, so I'm gonna take the bag here and I'm just gonna kind of slide it over top of it. Like so. And then we are going to lay this down, lift it up, and then Velcro it off. Also, what's gonna go in here that I kind of just forgot is the base plate. So we're gonna take the rack off now and then we'll get the base plate and put it in this bag as well. Now we come back to the rack here so that we can undo the last three screws here. 
as soon as I throw them everywhere that hold on our rack to our base plate. All right, so here we have the bag for the rack and me and Joe were actually talking. This is actually the initial concepts of the bags. So might actually redesign this a little bit. Right now it's designed that I pick this up and set it in sideways. Might redesign the bag to just slip over the top. Mm -hmm. So stay tuned to Bun Gear um, for how that's gonna transpire, but very excited to see what it would be like just slipping over. But for now, I'm gonna pick this up, put it in this bag right here, and we're gonna be good to go. The last thing to do is to put our base plate, and there is another bag for the base plate itself. So a nice snug fit. It slips the base plate right in. And now you can either put this in the bag right here with this, or you can put it in the bag with your top. I'm actually gonna put it in the bag with the top just because I, I want it in the bag with the top. That's my personal opinion. You can put it in either or though. Then we just velcro this up right here. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how easy it is to transport. So to roughly give you guys an idea of the weight right now, this is roughly about like 40 pounds over here. This is like 20, maybe 30 at the most. And that's loaded with all the gear in the rack is about 40 pounds-ish. Um, and that's, that's a good judgment. I lift a lot, so I'm pretty used to it. And this obviously doesn't have my SZ. If this had my SZ in it, probably weigh about 30, 35 pounds. But two bags, and we have a rock and roller here in front of me. I'm gonna put this up here on the back. And I'm gonna put my table right here, or my rack portion right here. We're good to go. And that right there is my new Bun Gear Command Center. This is what I'm gonna be taking out because it's super portable to all of my remote gigs such as Friends Farm and just low key events that really I don't need to bring my giant custom uh, built booth to. One nice little bonus right now, this is actually a bundle. Everything you literally saw me do today is all a bundle on bungear.com minus the gear that we actually put into it. So in that bundle, it's actually a launch discounted special right now. So check the link in the description down below if you wanna look at possibly getting yourself one of these. Uh, but you're gonna get the top, you're gonna get a custom cut plate for your exact controller, you're gonna get all the bags that you guys saw me, you're gonna get the laptop stand, you're gonna get the hooks for your mic and for your headphones, you're gonna get that one shelf for your rack itself, and that's pretty much all you need basically for your bun command center. Some additional custom things that you might wanna consider that I put into this are the antenna combiners and the antenna relocators. So the antenna relocators are actually being sold on bun gear, uh, dot com. So if you want the little antenna things that put the antennas on the side of the booth, you can go buy those additionally. And also if you want one of those like custom plates like I have at the bottom, you can build it yourself or you can contact Ben at NLFX and he can design you a custom one for your specific needs. But overall guys, that is the Bun Command Center. It comes in black like you saw mine. It comes in white like Joe's got over here. It's super dope. It is like I said, it's only 46 pounds total without any gear in it. And like I told you, both of these bags are roughly around 30 to 40 pounds. It's very manageable. It's quick to set up, quick to tear down. I'm, I'm stoked. I love it. It's awesome. But anyways, before we go here, I wanted to uh, bring Joe back in the video one last time here to kind of say some last thoughts and just basically say where you get them. That was his first time seeing the black one in person, so he's kind of... He's kind of jelly over here. Yeah. <laughs> My man here from North Carolina is about to take the only black one in existence back to the western part of North Carolina, and I'm sitting here toying with if I'm going to actually let him out of the building. But guys, I'll be honest with you, I'm not here to sell you anything. I've been working on this for well over a year. I sold the fiberglass ones for over two years. I finally feel like we got it right with the command center from Bun Gear. Absolutely. I'm, I'm proud of it. Um, I'm excited to see it. I'm Every excited. time I posted a picture today <laughs> of us with the black one, people were going nuts and, and mine, you know, the white one, uh, now I'm, you know, like I said, I'm kind of wavering if I want to go to the black, but either way, you're going to love it. I promise you that we have done an outstanding job of, of building, designing, and, and fabricating this for the mass consumption. So if you want one, it's at bungear.com. Links in the description down below, as well as the first comment. Yep. And also um, uh, at Bun Gear on Instagram. Yeah, so at Bun Gear on Instagram right there. That's it for the video, guys. Be sure to like the channel or like the video. You can like the channel too if you want by hitting that subscribe button. Subscribe. As well as the notification bell. And 
Okay. That's pretty much it. Uh, follow Joe Bunn. Here's his handles. I'll give him a little plug, a little shout out on the video appreciate as well. It, appreciate it. But anyways, guys, uh, if you got any questions, comments, or concerns about the table itself, I'm going to be using it at multiple gigs here coming up, and I'll be giving you guys feedback later on on how it is working out for me. So yeah, leave that down in the comment section down below. But like always, guys, my name is DJ Rick Webb. Joe Bunn. Joe Bunn. Keep the record spinning, and we will see you guys next time. Peace.